And welcome again to the Study Bible Bible Study, where we study the Bible with study Bibles. And Revelation 17 and 14 tells us, And these shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall conquer them, for he is Lord of lords, he is King of kings, and they who are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And Psalm 41 to 3, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God, and many shall see it, and shall fear, and shall trust in the Lord. And O Lord, my strength, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, and whom will I trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation, my high tower, Psalm 18. And we are in our manual for men, saints, the heroes of our faith. I think we were talking about them last time here. But speaking more about Catholic stuff, because well, we're reading some Catholic stuff. There's many things, too. I probably had this on other videos, but there are many things when it comes to uh, many Protestant brothers and sisters degrading uh, the, the Catholic practices of Mother Mary. Now, if you're not aware of this, you should not do this under any circumstance. Do you believe you're right? Who cares? I'm going to be honest about that one. Very simple reason. Now, Mary is the mother of Jesus Christ. And the Bible does say, honor your mother and your father. So the way I always put it, if you know enough not to um, degrade your own mother, why would you degrade the mother of Christ? And two, when it comes time to the great throne judgment, and when you stand before God to be judged, who is going to judge you? Who lets you into heaven? You might want to consider who's the gatekeeper, who's standing at the door. Do you think Jesus is going to take it lightly that you degraded his mother or degraded Joseph or degraded any of Jesus' friends or followers? The people, too, who don't believe in Christ, but for some reason like to, you know, attribute a lot of their religion to him. When you stand in judgment and when you go to the afterlife and you have to come and cross through by Christ. Now, for people who don't pay him, I guess, the respect that maybe probably should be paid, do you honestly believe when you come in front of him, you're just going to wave your hand and say, step aside, I'm only here to see the Father? I mean, do you just you honestly believe that he's just going to step out of the way and say, Oh, yes, sir, you're right and I'm wrong. Away, away you go to the Father. I'll just stand out of the way. There's a certain arrogance there I'm just touching on. I'm playing that certain string of arrogance I keep coming across, especially when it comes to the Mary bashing. So many Protestant preachers, too, nowadays, they're very vocal about their Mary bashing, and Jesus is the only way, but when you have a clear understanding of what some of this stuff is actually about, Mary's job on this earth when people profess to know her is directly, is that she points people to her son, that is her job, like all the saints and all the literature that is acquired and all the artwork, everything is designed to point people to Christ and to have kind of a very pictographical view of Christ and what has happened over the centuries. It's not meant to sway you from Christ, it's to help you and help us kind of get a closer understanding of who Christ is. But I'll stop with the merry thing until I try to watch some online preaching again and listen to more people bash Mary and unbelievable it's unbelievable and it's very backwards to think on one hand you're preaching Christ and under the same breath you're sitting there degrading his mother because most sons when it comes to people degrading their mothers they really don't appreciate that and if you think he's gonna let you off the hook for that indiscretion I don't know well, it's between you and him 
but I do choose that you hope, I do hope that you choose to make better decisions before you do such things. Because, you know, I believe a lot of that is, it's taught through the different churches because it's a certain business model to scoop people from the Catholic faith and put them in their seats opposed to allowing them to be in the other seats. And that's what it really is. It's the popularity contest and you're trying to scoop people and get your own views and your own ratings and your own subscriptions and, you know, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar, but to God's the things that are God's. And understand who you're working for. Are you really bringing people to the kingdom? Or are you really deterring people and just trying to get them to see your point of view? Because if you teach degradation of Mary in your in your speech and in your preaching that degradation teaching goes into the people that you're speaking to and then they will go and teach it and then you got a whole bunch of uh, anti Mary idiots running around you know, take that with a grain of salt or however you like I don't uh, I don't see anything productive or fruitful in that uh, frame of mind so the Saints are heroes in our faith our heroes of faith. Who should we look up to? Who should we place as idols in our day and time? Should it be basketball players who make multi-millions of dollars who spend their time with um, in brothels with uh, brothel workers doing drugs, promoting drugs, glamorizing drugs? Come on. Even when you look at Hollywood stars, I mean, a lot of them are drug addicts, a lot of them committed suicide because of drugs and being deluded and hopelessness, and these are the people that people hold above us all, and the people who people look to as idols. And the people who do look at these people and know more about them and conceive them as their idols in their lives, these are the same people who would say, well, how dare you worship a saint? How dare you worship somebody who led a productive life and built something positive? It's completely backwards. So people who preach that stuff, stop watching television. Turn off the television. It makes you stupid. And start thinking before you speak. Now, this is what our forefathers, the saints, have done for two millennia. As the gospel reveals the, re the reality of masculinity, we can also find it lived out in heroic witnesses of the saints. Saints are a kind of continuation of the gospels and so give us examples of varied paths of holiness. Thus as Jesus shows us the perfection of masculinity, we can also find it lived by the saints who were led by Christ just as an aspiring baseball player is aspired at the Baseball Hall of Fame. So we must look to those who have gone before us to look to them for inspiration and encouragement in fighting the good fight. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold of eternal life whereunto thou were also called, and hast professed the good profession before many witnesses. Now, think of the varied skills and the talents of baseball players. A young person may dream to hit like Babe Ruth and catch and throw like Willie Mays and have the agility of Henry Aaron and the consistency and the hard work of Lou Gehrig and Jackie Robinson, a young pitcher's would dream of pitching like Cy Young and Randy Johnson and as they see each of these players play the game in different ways they are inspired to a love of baseball. Yet far greater than a baseball game is what Catholic men seek. We look to the saints as heroes striving to live like Christ united to him and learning from him at the same time in a dramatic way to which we can relate the saint's life says, Behold the man. Here is the man. This is what St. Paul implies when he writes, It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life that I live now in the flesh, I no longer I live by the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. 
but each man should make a decision to have a patron saint. Wow, there are many more. I offer the names of ten saints with whom each and every Catholic man should become familiar. Next to each saint's name is listed one virtue which he has associated, as well as the sin that opposes the virtue. When we identify our predominant sin and the opposed or corresponding virtue, we can identify with the saint's intercession will be particularly helpful. When we identify our predominant sin and the opposed or the corresponding virtue in order that we need to learn and we need to draw power from in order to be able to fight our predominant sin, the identities which these saints will intercess on our behalfs will be particularly helpful and we'll go into the saints on the next one. Or right, we'll read through now, I've got one minute here. Now, Saint Joseph trust in God. He fights against selfishness. Saint John the Baptist, humility, he fights against arrogance. Saint Paul, his adherence to the truth, he fights against mediocrity. Saint Michael the Archangel, obedience to God. He fights against licentiousness and rebelliousness. Saint Benedict, a prayer and devotion to God. He fights against sloth. Saint Francis of Assisi, he fights, or he is his virtue is happiness. He fights against moralism. Saint Thomas More is integrity. He fights against double-mindedness. Now blessed Pierre Frasiti, his is chastity, he fights against lust. Saint Jose Maria Escrivia, Escrivia. He, his is boldness, he fights against worldly fear. And Saint John Paul II, defending the weak, he stands against passivity. And Psalm 51, have mercy on me, O oh, la miserari. A prayer of repentance. Have mercy on me, O God, in accord with your merciful love. In your abundant compassion, blot out my transgressions, thoroughly wash away my guilt, and from my sin cleanse me, for I know my transgressions, <coughs> my sin is always before me. Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your eyes, so that you are just in your word. And without a reproach in your judgment, behold, I was born in guilt. In sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire true sincerity, and secretly you teach me wisdom. Cleanse me with hyssop, that I may be pure. Watch me, and I will be whiter than snow. You will let me hear gladness and joy. The bones you have crushed will rejoice. And Revelation 17, 14 tells us, And these shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall conquer them. For he is Lord of lords, he is King of kings. And they who are with him are called and chosen and faithful. God bless and amen from the Study Bible Bible Study, where we study the Bible with Study Bibles. Show my professional home page there. So I didn't have time to sit down and watch cartoons and make you little cartoon figures. Maybe in the future, but I seriously doubt it. Are you here to watch cartoons or are you here to learn some memory verses and hear some readings? Joyce is yours. It's up to you. God bless and amen.